in the month of August, my birthday month. Woohoo! I celebrate for a whole month. My birthday is at the beginning of the month, so I celebrate the whole month, not just one day. I feel like I've been waiting a year for my birthday to come. I can at least celebrate that month. And so during the month of my podcast, I want to enlighten you and make you feel happy and focus on some different things. Take a little bit different route this time uh, as we leave uh, the focus of black, indigenous people of color, mental health awareness month. We want to laugh a little bit. So one thing I'm going to do is ask you to leave me a comment on who you think is the greatest comedian ever, or at least the top three or five greatest comedian ever. You can email me, you can text me, any of that, and let me see what you think. And we want to laugh a little bit, and I want to give you my opinion on who I think are some of the greatest comedians ever that ever lived. Uh, and because I like to laugh, I used to like to crack jokes and everything like that. So hit me up. And I, I was thinking about doing this live. I may do it live. If a few of you uh, tell me, hey, look, we'll tune into you in your live or we'll listen to it live because I hate to see when people start a live, even in the church live, you know, they sitting there. We're going to wait for a few more people to sign in before we get started. Yeah. Oh, how you doing, Jim? Yeah, it's just me and you now. Now, I don't want to do that. You know, it's kind of embarrassing to me, you know. I would feel embarrassing if you still had the same two people on the same task. So let me know if you want me to do it live or uh, I, I'll let you know who I feel uh, first, who are some of the greatest comedians ever, and maybe later on in the month we go live. So hit me up at Spotify, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, any of those places, I'm on anchor.fm. You can just type my name in, Antonio Demare, D-A-M-A-Y-O-R, Tim's, into any search engine, and it'll come up. Usually it'll come up on YouTube or something like that. So let me know, you know, because I know some of you have been asking, when are you going to do something on video? You know, if I do it on video, that's what it'll be, a vlog. You know, my podcast, I like to keep it personal and do it on the, uh, uh, do it, you know, without a camera or anything like that, just with the mics in front of you, so you can get that feeling of uh, being personalized, and you know, you can feel that person more like when we were young and we used to listen to the radio, and you got every TV program you could think of came on the radio, and you focus so much because you would be quiet and listen because you didn't want to miss anything because you didn't have the capabilities of rewinding or any of those things. So I want you to listen to my podcast, and maybe one day I'll come to you with a video. So. That's me, and uh, um, this is me, and uh, I'm done right now, and so I'll sign off, and I hope that you hit me up and we talk about this. The following podcast deals with BIPOC Mental Health Awareness Month, which is July. Just sit back and listen as I continue to bring you different messages from people in our community that are dealing with either mental health issues, that have dealt with mental health issues, or our providers themselves. Just listen. And know what I'm saying to you today is coming from the heart. A lot of us have dealt with things that have almost broken us down. May have broken your heart, broken your spirit. But know that you can rise up and stand strong because there's help for you. There's help from God and there's help from your friends. Don't let this thing take you down. Don't let pride. That's the thing I'm talking about take you down. So listen and enjoy. I'm Antonio Timms, Tony the Mayor, D-A-M-A-Y-O-R, Timms. Sometimes I'm right and I can be wrong. My own beliefs are in my song, the butcher, the baker, the drummer, and then. Makes no difference what group I'm in. I am everyday people. There is a blue one who can't accept the green one for living with. A fat one trying to be a skinny one. Different strokes for different folks. We got to live together. I am no better and neither are you. We're all the same whatever we do. You love me, you hate me. You know me. And then you can't figure me out. The bag I'm in, I'm everyday people. There's a long hair that doesn't like the short hair for being such a rich one that will not help the poor one. Different strokes 
from different folks. We are everyday people and we got to live together. Now, those are not my words. Those are the words of Sly and the Family Stone, everyday people, speaking poetically before his time. As we continue to live in this diverse world and try to get along and try to love each other. Different strokes for different folks. What causes someone to mistreat someone just because of their skin color or their ethnicity? A lot of times it's a lack of knowledge. You don't know. You're uneducated about that person. You don't know who they are, what they like. You're just looking on the outside and you're looking at that shell. But we got to understand that there are many of us in the world that are different. We have different strokes and we are different folks. We are everyday people. Do I not accept one because he's one color? Do I not accept this other one because he's this size? Do I not accept this one because he lives on this street? We have to learn to live together. We're talking about diversity and we're talking about black indigenous people of color or our minority people and mental health. For years, there has been different strokes for different folks. When I grew up on the south side of Chicago in the 60s, 70s, and part of the 80s, I never knew anyone that visited a community mental health center. It was always waiting till that person had what we would say was a breakdown and they were committed into a mental institution, but no one receiving care prior to that breakdown. The care was provided by the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. It was provided by the community. Sometimes it was effective, sometimes it wasn't. And when I say the community can be grandma, it can be the preacher, it could be the man that runs the corner store, it could be your best friend, your cousin, your next door neighbor. That's where the care was provided. But when that care was not enough, there came a breakdown. We would say, oh, he didn't lost his mind. He's crazy. We would see people like this walking around the street with uh, barefooted, clothes hanging off them, hair uncombed, talking to their cell and say they're crazy. But you don't know what took place prior to all of this, prior to the clothes, prior to the hair, prior to the breakdown. What took place there? What were we doing as a community to help these people? We're everyday people, right? But what were the people doing to help these people besides telling them, I can't help you? How many times have you heard that? I can't help you. Send you to the next person. I can't help you. Send you to the next person. But after a while, the next person and the next person and the next person and the next person finally runs out. And we face a lot of that today. Of course, we have made leaps and bounds in mental health and in understanding the mind. But it's still some of us who refuse to receive that help that is out there for them. That help that is out there to say, let me help you. Let me take care of you. And I'm not talking about just praying to God. Yes, we love God. But it's those that are in the church that have had breakdowns ourselves. Have breakdowns right there in church. And what do we say? That's a demon. They demon put that. But you don't know what's been going on in that mind and in that soul that they've been tormented by different things before then. Yes, we can pray, we can lay hands, and we can believe God and have faith. But where do we go from there after we pray? After that person has left the church and went back home to the same situation that you were praying about, you going back home to your lavish living and they're going back home to whatever situation they were facing, whether it was abuse, whether it was poverty, whether it was alcoholism, drug abuse, they're going back there even after you prayed and lifted your hands and said, hallelujah, we got one that's delivered tonight. What about that mind after that? People need our help. The church is important to the community. Black, white, Hispanic, the church is important to the community. Asian, the church is important to the community. 
but so is your community mental health center. So is the doctor that you should be seeing. It's important. Black men, my brothers, we're going to have to shape up or ship out. We're going to have to come to terms with ourselves. We are a dying breed. Yes, we are. A strong black man or black men that are headed in the right direction. It's a attack on the family. I don't need a man. I don't need a husband. I don't need a strong figure there. I don't need this and I don't need that. It's the attack on the family and to keep you from being the man that you want to be by getting in your mind and saying, they don't even need me. Yes, we need you. Yes, they need me. Need me as a black man. And I can only speak to this. Somebody may say, why are you not saying this about the Hispanics, the Asian, and white? Because I'm a black man. So I'm going to say it about the people that I'm associated with now or usually daily or the ones that I know that need to take this thing seriously. Take it seriously, brother. Know yourself. Know when you're not feeling the same way that you used to feel. Know when your emotions are running rampant. Know when you're up for a week and down for two weeks. Up and down, up and down. Know when you've fallen into depression. A lot of us don't like to say that word, depression. But know yourself. You got to know yourself. I had to learn myself. And I think I told you guys the other day, it took me years, years to understand, hey, Tony, you may need help. Who are you talking to? You're talking to everybody else. Who's talking to you? You're helping everyone else. Who's helping you? Who's listening to you? You are sitting there helping families solve problems. You are the parent support for everyone else. What about your support? And it took me a while to come to terms with myself and say, you know what? I need help. It shouldn't have to get to the point that you have to break down and be hospitalized because you come to the point that, I don't even want to live anymore. No, you may not have planned a suicide or anything like that, but the thought has came. I don't want to be here anymore. You may not have planned it and you may not have attempted it, but the thought that says, I don't want to be here. I don't even want to survive no more. This has got so tough and so hard. I don't even want to be here anymore. It's gotten to the point that the things around me are taking place or overtaking me. It's the maybe the drugs, the alcohol, the women, it may be your 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 job, maybe your your marriage. But these things have become such much but these things have become so much of a weight on me. I don't know what to do, and all I want to do is be out of here. I want out. How many have said that before? I just want out of it. I want out of all this. I want to get out of this. I want to get out of that. I want to get out of this. I want to get out of that. I want to get away from here. I want to be gone. I want to be gone so far away that these things are not weighing me down anymore. That's when you have to recognize and wake up that maybe I need help and put my pride aside, put my strong black man aside for a minute and say, hey, look, I need some help. Lord, if it's to God, say, God, I need help. Or if it's to someone else, a friend, admit it to someone and say, somebody that's tangible and also and say, I need help. Yes, I've told the Lord, but I want to tell you too that I need help. I need out of this thing. And the only way I'm going to get out of it is by letting it come out of me. Letting this situation in. Letting the depression in. It may not be over, but it may be able to be controlled a little bit more. Maybe the anger, the anger, the hatred, the rage, the resentment can be taken away by simply saying, I need help. You may say, oh, it's not that simple. Oh, it can be. It can be managed, may not go away, but you can help manage your emotions. Quit being so strong in, in, in the mind and strong will that you don't want to say that I need help. Oh, I couldn't tell my wife that. I can't tell my mom that. I can't tell my cousin that. I can't let them know that how I'm feeling. Oh, yes, you can. All it does is take one person that you trust and you have faith in that will help you and protect your privacy, and be able to lead you to the people that can help you, whether they lead you to the altar or they lead you to a community mental health center. 
Let them lead you and let them help you. Now, this may shock you, but most racial groups have similar or even fewer mental health problems or mental health condition than whites. But the effect in the black indigenous people of color groups lasts longer. For instance, over 24 percent of blacks and almost 20 percent of Hispanics are diagnosed with depression as opposed to almost 35% of whites. So we have depression in these things, but the effect on us lasts longer. The the effects of depression last longer. The stretch, how long am I dealing with this lasts longer in black and Hispanics? Now I can sit here and throw numbers at you all day. I can throw numbers at you to tell you how many of our African-American men deal with post-traumatic stress. How many of them deal with being incarcerated and have to come out and deal with the mental health condition of being incarcerated, the mental health uh, uh, struggles of being incarcerated? Some of the things that I said before that cause us as a minority. One of the things is not having insurance. One of the major things is the stigma associated with mental health condition. That stigma, that thing that I just talked about a few minutes ago, worrying about what someone else thinks or, or, or what, what they think about, hey, he's going to be perceived as losing his mind or being uh, unbalanced or unstable. And it is a lack of diversity among providers. We don't have providers that can provide to us. And there's the big thing of distrust with the health care system. And that's just real. Some of us just don't trust the health care system, whether it's getting a coronavirus shot or we're sitting down on the couch and talking to someone about your problem. It's a distrust. So I may have sound a little bit excited earlier, but I was speaking to you from my heart. I don't want us to go on over and over and over again, needing help, but being too strong willed to say, I need help. Talk to your loved ones. Talk to your friend. Talk to your pastor. But get help. Be strong. Be encouraged. But most of all, be real. Thank you. The number to call is 1-800-273-TALK or 1-800-273-8255. National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is 1-800-SUICIDE. Again, that's 1-800-SUICIDE. The crisis text line is Text hello to 741741. Again, that's crisis text line. Text hello to 741741. Crisis hotline for teens and kids is 1-877-968-8491. Or you can text teen to teen at 839-863. The ages are between 11 and 21 years of age. Thank you for listening. I appreciate your support by lending me your ear. Please go and subscribe, follow, and share my podcast. For questions and comments, I can be reached at bigdog0862 at me.com. That's bigdog0862 at me.com. Tune in weekly for something interesting and exciting. This is Antonio the Mayor, Tony the Mayor, signing off and saying thank you. And remember, you can reach me also on Facebook at Tony the Mayor. Tony the Mayor, D-A-M-A-Y-O-R. And you can also reach me on Instagram, the Mayor 0862. The Mayor, D-A-M-A-Y-O-R 0862. So I'll be looking to hear from you next time. And remember, call me, send me a message, because everyone has a story to tell of experience, strength, and hope. And I want to hear your story. Thank you again.